Welcome to The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Today is Yoga Day, International Yoga Day. It's the 21st of June, this day that we're actually recording this on, although you probably won't hear it until the end of June, the start of July. So we organised this interview about a month ago, and myself and my guest didn't even realise it was Yoga Day. So this is quite a remarkable um, coincidence that I'm sure you'll agree because my guest is from India, and his name is Amrit, and he's going to share his testimony, um, his life story with us today. So let's now say hello to our friend Amrit. Hello, everyone. Amrit here. Thank you. I'm so, uh, glad so to. Thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be on your show, Laura. I was looking forward to sharing my testimony on uh, how God brought me to himself and uh, how I got rescued from the demonic act, demonic cults of yoga. It's just so good for, for you to, to be on the show. And I remember last year I interviewed our friend, Sister Nidhi, and she had a very similar testimony to yours so it's lovely um to hear from you today yeah um i heard the testimony of sister nidhi she's also from india and uh, this is going to be a similar testimony but uh, what i see is uh, i went a lot deeper into yoga and i saw things which uh, i mean uh, which sister nidhi also did but i, I think as i, I by the grace of God, they know came out out of a lot of uh, lot of demonic uh, influence, which was a, which was upon my life, and um, I saw things, experienced things, and uh, I was uh, like about to die, and uh, it's uh, but by the grace of God, I was marvelously saved. Well, that's just wonderful, and, and I'm sure that the listeners are keen to to hear your story. Um, Amrit, so please begin by, by telling us a little about uh, your childhood, your family background. Did your family um, have a faith? Were they? Tell us a little bit about, about your parents' faith, what they believed in. Uh, I was born and brought up in India in a Hindu family. And uh, my family is uh, a very uh devout hindu family practicing hinduism like uh, very much involved in uh, hindu worship and involved in uh, worshiping the saints worshiping the animals worshiping the plants and the trees and uh, like the they were my my family what i can say is uh, we are brought up in such a way that we were taught Hindu scriptures, were taken to, you know, a lot of, uh, in the holidays, we used to give, go for months in the ashrams, the camps, in the camps held in, uh, in the villages where we used to live with the gurus and the babas and they used to teach us. And we used to stay with them for a month and learn things about spiritual spiritual things uh, and um, yoga and uh, also learn different ways of uh, reaching God, what they taught. And uh, being brought up in a Hindu uh, society, Hindu culture and a Hindu community, mm-hmm. like uh, we, we were told from the beginning that, you know, Hinduism is uh, like uh, is a religion where you have to pay for the karma, the bad things which you have done in your life. Uh-huh. You have to pay the price, and uh, and there is no escaping from there. Maybe if you do a lot of good works, maybe you can escape a little bit, but 
you have to suffer for the sins which you have committed even even if it is small sin of a small lie you told or a small small uh, thing you have stolen from somebody you have to pay the price mm -hmm. and uh, it is true as well like you know you have to pay the price for the wrong things which you have done so being brought up in a family which is you know so so much involved in the things of uh, the spirit things things of the hindu worship and uh, i knew from a child a lot of things about to, the worshiping the gods and the idols and um, and different uh, memorizing different scriptures memorizing the hindu shlokas and uh, mantras and uh, you know trying to please gods and trying to you know uh, do fasting mm -hmm. and um, like uh, my mother and uh, my aunts so many of them were fully vegetarian my my family was not not vegetarian but uh, uh, like they were fully vegetarian they, they don't even eat any meat or eggs mm -hmm. so we had examples so great examples of people trying to do the best to reach god by what they thought was the best way to do yes and uh, like and after that after when i reached the age of 19 years old my father passed away at the age of 19 mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and i was the head of the family and i had to, i have one mother and a, a younger sister and a younger brother so being in india being the elder of the family once the father passes away it's the responsibility of the elder child elder um, elder son to look after the family yes and uh, i became very serious uh, with the things of the spirit and uh, i very much went deeper into the things of god than before mm -hmm. and uh, even though living knowing all the spiritual things i was still a sinner practicing my secret sins and uh, you know watching uh, uh, things movies which i shouldn't be watching mm -hmm. i'd be doing all these spiritual things on the other side we were having our own uh, secrets in life you know so i wanted to get these things focus on god and get to know him because i have the responsibility of taking care of my family now mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, in in India there is no shock. In the, in this was this was uh, this happened 20 years back. My father passed away mm -hmm. in 19 uh, uh, 1994, actually 22 years back. And there was uh, not much social security benefits in India. Mm -hmm. So even today there are not many. Uh, it's like if you don't earn money, you die. You mm. don't eat. And if you don't have money, you you know you you are left to yourself. You don't have any support from the government. Yes. And it's uh, very important for a person to work properly, study properly, and get a job and uh, help himself and help the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's what uh, my upbringing was. And mm -hmm. um, and I have more to say about what happened then. Yeah, uh, that uh, is what happened. When you say yeah. you got into more spiritual things, um, do you mean you got into, for example, uh, meditation? And, and did you believe then in reincarnation? Were these the kind of beliefs and practices the gurus taught you? Yeah, after my father passed away in 1994, mm -hmm. and, when I, and when I was uh, uh, 18, 19 years old, uh, I had a asthma problem and uh, I wanted to get rid of asthma problem and I tried a lot of medication. I tried uh, the Ayurvedic medication which is uh, popular in India. I tried the best doctors. I was not try trying to get, not getting um, relief from this, from the sickness, sickness of uh, asthma. Mm -hmm. So it was affecting my work, my studies. And I would be. Very, it was like I was very allergic to things. I couldn't even drink uh, cold water in summer. I couldn't oh eat. Goodness. And I, yeah, I couldn't, 
I couldn't, I couldn't eat uh, even an ice cream in a summer, Indian summer, which is around mm -hmm. 45 degrees Celsius, 45 mm -hmm. degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it was a, a aggravated case of uh, asthma and uh, it was uh, putting me, you know, uh, holding me back from studying and moving forward, forward for, in my life. Yes. So I wanted to get rid of it at any cost because I had to look after not only myself, my family also. Mm -hmm. So because these attacks, whenever it, they happen, I will be sick for three, four days. I will be on antibiotics. I'll use a lot of medication, spend a lot of money on the doctors and medication and doctors are not free in India. No. You have to pay, pay a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So to get rid of this uh, pressing uh, problem which I had, I started to uh, to do meditation and uh, you know I thought I will do some meditation yoga and uh, maybe it will help me and I came across one new age yoga which was being practiced uh, uh, which was being thought for freely thought in a place near where I live so we as a family went to do do that yoga and they told that whatever sickness you have will be gone if you do this practices meditation this yoga this new new age thing mm -hmm. so i i thought i tried the doctors i tried the temples now let me try meditation and yoga and maybe this will help me so i started doing this yoga in 1996 and uh, after doing this uh, meditation yoga, which is called as Sahaj Yoga, mm -hmm. and uh, it is still being practiced worldwide, you know, it's being promoted in, uh, uh, I was in Australia, I saw the being, uh, saw the centers of this yoga being, uh, being opened and people going and people, people being taught this. They have this, this is a world, worldwide network of uh, yoga ministry, which is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and it, the, but the origin of this yoga is from India. This kind of is done by one Mataji called um, Nirbala Devi, and she's head of this organization, the yoga, she's a yoga guru. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they taught this yoga, Kundalini, it is actually Kundalini yoga. <clears throat> it is called a Sahaj yoga. Sahaj means e easy yoga. Sahaj is a Hindi word. So, it's called easy yoga and uh, I started doing the yoga very sincerely dedicatedly with all my <clears throat> all of sincerity and dedication to get better and to to get to get help from this and so that yes. I can have have a better life <clears throat> and also can help my family and did they say that this would also increase your <coughs> spiritual life that this was a spiritual yeah. practice not just physical practice yeah, they, they say it's a spiritual practice which will help, eventually help a person to get uh, salvation, mukti or nirvana, what they call. And uh, they, they say it will help you to attain the salvation through this practice and also help you to to get uh, delivered from your problems, your sicknesses and disease. They, they, they make a lot of promises mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's uh, uh, like uh, um, it's I mean it's a big deception and uh, it's uh, it's not just the words uh, they, they after doing this yoga for nearly three four months I got uh, healed from my asthma problem for for a while mm -hmm. it has the, these yogas are uh, uh, you know, at the time, even I don't know what it is. I would never read the Bible. I never uh, knew what the new age. I was just 19 and uh, I started practicing these. Yeah. I, bought the, I bought the books and I started reading them and uh, sincerely applied and did the medication, meditation daily, in, one hour in the morning, one hour in the night. And I was fully involved. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, by doing that, I saw my asthma getting healed. Mm -hmm. And I, after that experience, uh, you know, I can feel the vibrations coming out of my hand. I can feel, feel my kundalini moving up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I can feel the chakras. You know, it's a tangible feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Explain to the audience, please. Um, some people might say, what do you mean you felt the kundalini rising? What do you mean 
about chakras. I, I understand it because I was a new ager when I was young. And like yourself, I was taught that yoga and meditation were, were two very key things to attract spirits to me and to open up my soul to the spiritual realm, that it was a very spiritual practice. Um, so I understand what you're saying, but explain the Kundalini and the chakras for the audience, please. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Uh, like, uh, yoga is a Sanskrit word. Sanskrit is uh, Latin for in Indian languages. So Sanskrit language is uh, the yoga, the term, the term yoga comes from a Sanskrit word. Uh, uh, sorry, it is a, uh, yoga is a uh, Sanskrit word which means union, mm -hmm. become, becoming one in spirit, soul and body with the higher spirit. Mm, that's a key point right there. It's a, it's a union with a, a spirit we're talking about, folks. It's not just a relaxation technique. Yeah, it initially starts as a relaxation technique, stretching exercises and uh, going down to the idol of the yoga and uh, reciting the the mantras and the shlokas and uh, wherein these mantras and shlokas are actually in a Sanskrit language which, which you don't understand and mm -hmm. they don't tell you the meaning mm. they just told you they tell you to recite but just repeat and just believe that so whatever you're saying even though you don't understand mm. so actually when you are uttering that uh, that words even though you don't understand, you're actually committing your spirit, soul, and body to a higher spirit, yes. which is a demo which is a demonic spirit, which you are not aware of. Yeah, it's really like you are um, by saying those names of those gods over and over. It's almost like you are calling those gods to yourself. You're attracting them to yourself. Yeah, you're dedicating your soul through the chanting and rituals, mm. and. Uh, and you are binding yourself to the spirits of yoga, yeah. which are which are demonic, which have some power. Initially, I got healed. Yeah. And, mm. and you know, uh, uh, it, it starts with physical exercises first. But as you get to the higher levels, you enter a demonic realm, mm -hmm. which, which many people are not aware of. And where you will be gradually possessed by different spirits of the new age. Mm -hmm are the evil satanic spirits which work through yoga and um, which people worship in the process of in process of yogic rituals through chanting of verses and and uh, through body pose, posture body po, po, post, po, body posters you know postures you know different bending mm -hmm. different ways of bending and prostrating before these idols mm -hmm. will will make your spirit soul and body dedicated to them yeah. And uh, uh, and most uh, people are deceived into doing this, be and they are being taught that it leads to nirvana or mukti or salvation. Mm -hmm. And um, people are so some of, many of them are so naive and they just don't understand what they are doing. They think they are doing good thing and they are humble and they are surrendering to the spirit of this uh, universe and uh, you know the almighty god they think uh so i understand because i was taught that too and yeah we were taught it leads to nirvana um it leads to union with this universal spirit uh, and nowadays here in the uk and in europe too not not just india we are seeing lots of med mm -hmm. medical centers lots of local doctors um, advising people to go and do yoga or meditation to help them relax or um, to help their health and what they're not mentioning is the very spiritual practices you can't divorce the spiritual from the the physical side of yoga because it is it was designed primarily as a spiritual thing you know the yogis themselves they, they taught this the yogis said um, it can be dangerous to let your kundalini arise um, and yet in the west we tend to despiritualize it and make out oh it's just relaxation and you Amrit you actually felt the kundalini arise and you felt feelings around the so-called chakras can you tell us what that felt like 
Yeah. As I said in the beginning through yoga, I got healed of my asthma problem for mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. And when you get healed, you get more, you believe it more and you think this is the only thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is working and this is powerful. And when your Kundalini raise, uh, rises up, it's uh, if I used to feel the cold and hot a breeze coming out of my palms, mm-hmm. you know, it is the the what they call the vibrations mm-hmm. of of the Kundalini of the spirit inside you, and uh, I can feel if I have a you know if I have a problem in my stomach, I can can feel that that on my feel that on my finger. So each finger represent each a part of your body, mm-hmm. and and if my middle finger was heated up, it used to get heated up, and it used to it used to get uh, uh, you know very much uh, like it is as if you have applied some chili on top of your finger. It used to, <laughs> it used to burn like that. Wow! Well, mm-hmm. So it is an indication that there is something wrong with your chakra in your stomach. Mm-hmm. And you need to heal that. You need to do a ritual. You need to do a practice wherein you have to fix the chakra. Mm-hmm. So these this, these practices are are they, they really work. They show they 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 are tangibly felt, and it is it is real. Yeah. And and uh, but it's uh, after becoming a Christian, I realized that these things are not to be practiced because this is not the God's way of healing that part, not God's way of dealing with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's uh, the, this way is dealing with uh, with the help of the evil spirits, which will uh, which will never heal you totally, but which will show you some secret knowledge. You know, this is the yogas and chakras are being uh, you know the yoga uh, being. Uh, Practiced from thousands of years by these guru, gurus and all this. Mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. is these practices are forbidden in the Bible, mm-hmm. and and uh, these are uh, these have some power. These are this if they, if you follow that as it is, it will affect your body. Your body will show symptoms and signs, and uh, will also show show healings. And after a while, after doing that for this for. While I also, you know, uh, went to a stage where if I'm talking to a person, suppose that person has a has a, um, a kidney problem, if I'm talking to him, I can sense his problem, uh, feel his problem in on my hands. Mm-hmm. So each each part of my hand represented a part in the uh, the person's body. So if I'm talking to him, I can tell which part of the body has is affected, which part of uh, of his body is suffering. And uh, and I can tell if I tell to the person, the person will be amazed that how do you know this problem? Mm-hmm. It is it is a knowledge, a, a, a yogic knowledge is a knowledge of the through demonic spirits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's and like uh, uh, sorry for interrupting, but it reminds me of um, yeah, you know, a lot of people we might call them New Agers today who who practice um, yoga, meditation, uh, and so on. And they maybe don't have a, a a Hindu or a Buddhist background. Um, you know, they may be born and raised in Scotland, for example, and and um, you know, a white Anglo-Saxon person. Um, this hasn't been in their family, but they take these traditions on. Um, and I find it interesting that there'll be a lot of people who say, "I'm not religious. I'm not the least bit religious. I don't follow any religions. I just like to do spiritual things." And yet, I feel what they're forgetting is, okay, but that spiritual practice that you're doing does stem from a religion, whether it's Buddha, uh, Buddhism, or, or Hinduism. It does come from an actual religion, which is involving actual spirit entities. So, I guess a bit like Reiki, some people today might be a Reiki healer, a Reiki master, and they'll mm-hmm. say, you know, I'm not religious, I'm not spiritual. However, they are dealing with so-called Reiki uh, healing guides and, and, and spirits and, and so on that, that you came to discover, like myself, were demonic. But can I ask you, wh- when you were involved in these practices, did you ever wonder if they were as good as you thought they were at first? Did you ever wonder if perhaps they might be 
uh, evil that, that you were being deceived or did you totally trust it all and you never questioned it at all oh yeah that's a good question while i was doing while have uh, having these experiences of healing and uh, uh, what they what they told me in the in the yogic training center was after a while i can heal other people uh, other people by practicing this yoga i can uh, you know lead them to salvation i can get to a higher stage where i can heal many diseases and uh, you teach about peace it is all you know uh, very well dressed in a religious activity mm-hmm. and uh, people get inspired to do with uh, all good motivations and good intentions mm-hmm. and uh, i was the same same i thought by doing this i will get healed and i will help so many other people who are suffering and i will teach this yoga to them and i will help them to get healed yes. and and i never doubted it initially for the next first 5 mm-hmm. 6 months i never doubted it did anything but, uh, frightening anything frightening happen during that time that you know scared you in any way or, or were all those experiences very beautiful uh in, in like a, there's a scary part attached to it uh, as well but uh, uh like uh, in my case uh, when i was meditating upon a picture of the guru we were supposed to put a candle in front of uh, this photo of this guru who is a lady she has uh, on her face is the bindi you know indian people have this indian women have this bindi on their forehead yes they put a they put a mark uh, a red mark yes so, so they used to tell me just put a candle until in front of the picture of this lady who is the guru she was around 65 years old you know and uh, she has a big bindi what the big mark on her forehead and they said you meditate upon that mark looking through this fire through the ca- fire through the candle's fire mm-hmm. flame through the, through the flame look towards the picture concentrate focus on the on that uh, forehead of uh, the mark on a forehead mm-hmm. and your kundalini will awaken you will see see things uh, in meditation so when i did it sincerely i used to sit and meditate up like this looking through the flame upon her forehead on uh, on that um, mark on her forehead the red mark then one day i saw this red mark uh, just just circling very fast like moving uh, circulating you know mm-hmm. it, i can feel the vibrations uh, through my hand and you know the i can feel sensations in my body so it, i was a bit scared a bit but uh, again i thought maybe the, but this is good this is you know mm-hmm. from god and this is the power and this this kundalini person she she is to profess that she is she is uh, the she is the wife of almighty god she is told that you know Mm. she is uh, she is christ she should also used to also say that she is christ she is krishna she is the reincarnation of krishna the hindu god in this in this time in this age she is the reincarnation of hindu gods and she is also the re- the coming christ and uh, she used to say i am also part of uh, the islamic religion i am the fatima and uh, you know mm. she she is to show signs and uh, Uh, when picture people used to people used to take pictures of her in the meeting the pictures will come with uh, some hindu uh, like you take a normal picture but in the picture you will get along with her picture you will ha- get a, get the images of other hindu gods oh uh, yeah like spirits yeah yeah uh-huh. it, it is it is the idol the picture of the idol you know that comes along with her picture mm-hmm. and that is to show to the hindu that you know this is she is a reincarnation of a, a, of the hindu gods and uh, so things like that miraculous things were shown and miracles signs and uh, wonders were shown by this uh, false uh, guru you know false prophet mm-hmm. and uh, and also um like uh, she um after doing this for a while she told she told the group you after 5 6 months you, you know of doing this um uh, i can see the evil evil side of it you know the gradually i saw the evil the evil uh, dimension attached to that mm-hmm. only after so, si- after 6 months you began to see the evil 
Yeah, after six, uh, nearly four after uh, say four months, I saw wow, that I I got. I, yeah, after four months, I saw that I got healed of the asthma problem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, but uh, these even spirits, uh, some spirits are attacking me, which are causing me, you know, headaches, uh, and which are also causing me. Uh, when I'm sleeping, I am, I feel my body being sexually abused. Mm-hmm. I am uh, I I am masturbating by myself without my knowledge, and uh, it is uh, I can't stop it. And my body being abused sexually even by by these spirits of yoga. Mm-hmm. So I I reported this to my yoga guru, the 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 yoga teacher, who is you know the there are a lot of the yoga elders in the yoga. Committee and uh, I discussed with them, and they said to me that because you're still practicing Hinduism, mm-hmm. it is, these spirits are attacking you. You have to leave Hinduism and only follow this guru. You can't oh, practice. That, that yeah, seems really quite contradictory, doesn't it? I mean, if Hindu spirits uh, and Hindu gods are so good uh, uh, and bring you to God, why would they start to sexually harass you because you are now following a a guru that's rather contradictory i think yeah that's that's contradictory yeah. that's contradictory but what what this yoga people they tell after a while is this guru the head guru she's the she's the reincarnation of other gods and once you know her you should stop worshiping the other gods of in hinduism you should stop going to the temples you should, you know, stop. If you are a Christian, stop going to the churches. Mm-hmm. If you are a Muslim, stop going to the mosque. Only worship her, mm. and uh, do what she is saying because she is. She has shown you power. She has shown you signs, and now you have to renounce everything and follow her only. Mm. So, so I, I saw this is, you know, this is not good. This was this was something which was not told in the beginning. No, no, no not at all. No. You're not not promised that in the beginning. No, not in the beginning. And but I'm 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 at the time I was uh, like uh, partially possessed. Mm-hmm. So, and they and uh, they told me you have to do this. You have to only follow this. And uh, if your fam- family objects to this, worshiping the idols and all that, going to the Hindu worship, you have to even leave your family, mm-hmm. and you have to come and join this team and live with them. And uh, I was so tormented by the spirits in the nights that uh, I f- I left my family as well and I went to went and lived with these people in these people's houses and uh, started practicing the yoga there. Mm-hmm. To and they said if you leave the, your your house, your family, and leave the idols, the spirits which are troubling you in the night, which are causing you sexual abusing, you will stop you stop abusing you and uh, you you will. Uh, Come closer to this guru, and you will attain salvation, and you everything will be all right. It kind of sounds to me a bit like a, a a yoga cult, really. Yeah, they were they were. This is a big cult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. It, it's a very very demonic cult, which is mm-hmm. uh, highly deceptive. Yeah. And uh, I had to. I had a. Now, at the time, I left my family, left my younger brother, younger sister, who are dependent on me, my mother. I was, uh, and I thought I will get better, maybe come back later, but I need to get rid of the spirits. So I left my family and started following them. Mm-hmm. So, but after one week, my family came and we had a, they had a big fight with these people and they brought me back to my home. And uh, I said, uh, I will come back home, but you have to take off all the idols and all the other gods from the house and I will stay there and I will practice only this yoga and everybody in the house also should practice this. Uh, I mean, if, uh, if, they, even they, if, if they don't practice, at least they should not practice other, other uh, yogas and other um, idol worships, mm-hmm. only should do this. Mm-hmm. So this was the condition they asked me to put to the family. Mm-hmm. So I was under compulsion. If I don't do this, I will be attacked by the spirit. So I was, yeah. you know, you know, sort of blackmailed into doing this yeah. by this. And uh, after that, I saw, I heard that 
uh, some of the people who are doing this yoga, these are young boys around 20, 22, they come into suicide because they cannot handle the spirits and the, they, they jump. Committing yeah. suicide, young boys? Young boys after doing this. Oh, and uh, and my cousin, my cousin who was practicing along with me, he, he had a big, a similar problem like me and he was a brilliant student who was doing his engineering mm -hmm. studies but he could not complete finish his studies and he had the the, the course engineering studies was supposed to finish in three years mm -hmm. and he, he could only finish it in 10 years in spite of being a very bright student mm. so this this yoga spoiled his life spoiled mm -hmm. his career and I was going on the same track, you know, it was like destroying my life. Yeah. And I could not, I failed in my exams. I was doing my chartered accountancy at the time. Mm -hmm. I could not focus. I, I failed uh, for three years. And I was uh, very much very depressed because of all this. I used to, all the time, I used to have the severe headaches the whole day. Mm -hmm. And I uh, could not focus on my work. I was doing part time work, but I could not focus on that. I could not focus on my studies. Yeah. And uh, I uh, I lost my body weight. My body weight was reduced. I was around uh, 65 kilos. I uh, I was reduced to 35 kilos. I lost 30 kilos of my weight. Yeah. And, and it was not. It it, it was like I uh, it uh, I uh, it was. I became like a uh, very weak and very frail person. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, was uh, I can only you know I was gradually dying. My goodness, it, do you know, it reminds me so, so much of so many other stories I've heard of people um, in spiritual practices that go that way. And even my own mother, she did yoga and meditation when she was a spiritualist. And when she tried not to do meditation or she tried not to do yoga, the spirits would actually take over her body and force her to meditate yeah. and force her to do yoga when she didn't even want to do it. It's... Um, yeah, I've heard of that by a lot of people too. So, so tell us what happened next. Yeah, and it was a, I was in a living hell with oh. this, and uh, having a headache all the time, my nerve, like but my, my nerves in my head, pulling all the time, and uh, I can even if I read one paragraph in of uh, my my textbooks to read and memorize the answers. I could not remember them mm -hmm. and uh, I could not focus on work. I was so weak, I could not even lift 10 to 15 kilos of weight. And, um, you know, all the time, uh, in the night time I'm sleeping, I'm sexually abused. Mm -hmm. I was forced, I was like a rape by the spirits. Yes. I, I came about two or two one or two times uh, in the night. Mm -hmm. And I used to, I, I, and I used to cry in the night so because I don't want to sleep. I, if I sleep, I know I will lost, lose control over my body and the spirits will come and rape me and uh, abuse me and leave me, uh, leave me without any strength in the morning, you know. Mm -hmm. It's so just this, it's it, torment, isn't it? It's total torment. So, uh, you know, my mother went through the same and she, she, she would be desperate for sleep and yet frightened to go to sleep because she knew it was even harder to fight the demons when they came to her in her sleep it's just an absolute torment for people that go through this yeah it is horrible it's it's indescribable pain you can't even discuss this with anyone mm. I, I i'm boldly discussing it because i have by the grace of god overcome this mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like it it was uh, Beyond, you can't discuss these things with your friends or family. You know, it was very hard to tell them what's happening. Mm -hmm. You su silently suffer. And uh, as in your case of mom, I, I used to get up two o'clock in the night, just go walking in the streets. Like, you know, I don't want to sleep. I was crying. And mm -hmm. and this is on top of the, you know, on top of this, I have major other major problems i need to work have family responsibility i need to look after my mother my younger sister younger brother mm -hmm. i need to support myself if i don't work i can't eat you know it's a 
uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, other, I had to pay the rent for my house, and a lot of financial pr pr uh, troubles uh, and problems, and normal problems which a person will have. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> on top of this, this spiritual demonic problem is was too much for me to take. And, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm saying I suffered like this for nearly five years. Mm -hmm nearly five years yeah. Um, yeah and i understand why people get suicidal with with these it, spiritual yeah. torment yes absolutely many people commit suicide doing this mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and they it, it like um as i said i was in very serious trouble from all aspects of my life everything falling apart uh, above all all uh, above all these problems the excruciating demonic attacks so to get rid of this i started to in i left the yoga actually after six months i saw that it's demonic mm -hmm. i don't want to do that i will go back to my religion hinduism i will renounce this yoga and uh, i will try to get myself delivered from the spirits mm -hmm. so after six months i left the yoga i I burnt that books which I used to read. I burnt the pictures, and you know, mm -hmm. so I st uh, left the yoga. But even after leaving it, I can't. Do the symptoms, the the demon, demons won't leave me. Exactly. Yeah, they don't. They don't go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they don't want to leave you. Yeah. They, they don't. They are, they don't. They they want to kill you. They they you know as the Bible says, the devil comes to steal kill and destroy mm -hmm. so they, their ultimate purpose is to to destroy and kill you mm -hmm. and to take your soul to hell along with them mm -hmm. so after leaving this yoga i took the best uh, body possible medication available in india at the time i went to the top psychologist the psychiatrist mm -hmm. who had the who had the degrees from uk and us and um, you know uh, they were top top doctors in my city, which are very learned and very experienced people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to pay a lot of money as fees to them, you know. Mm -hmm. Like uh, all my money which I had, I used to spend on these doctors and other mm -hmm. the other treatments, which I the, which I'm going to discuss what I did mm -hmm. on uh, getting myself healed of these uh, demonic influences. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, this psychiatrist and psychologist is to give me antidepressants and other medications and uh, this will just uh, take away the symptoms sort of for a while they will let me sleep for 16 hours mm -hmm. they will you know uh, but they will not he this is not they, they won't heal my problem no no I, I would sleep for 16 hours. So if I was sleeping for 16 years, how can I study? How can I work? Mm. So these antidepressants and medications w were not working for me. I can see I used them for a while, for one year or something, but they were not helping me. Mm -hmm. And they never fully healed me. They just uh, subsided some symptoms, but never got the healing from them. Yeah. So along, along with this uh, medication, I used to do do go to the lot of temples the hindu temples do visit the uh, visit the temples in the morning in the night practice the different uh, ways of uh, of getting pleasing gods wherein they, they will heal you they will deliver you doing di different uh, following different uh, uh, ways of doing pujas on uh, on part on particular days and uh, you know fastings and prayers mm -hmm. and um, offering uh, you know uh, uh, I mean uh, helping the poor and uh, doing charity to please God and all the things I did uh, and uh, after that it, that didn't work it has some power but it didn't totally heal me. Mm -hmm. Then I I thought uh, this is not helping me, and I need to I need to get rid of this. I can't live th like this. I need to support my family, help my family, help myself, mm -hmm. and uh, I should try something else as well. I can't just go on like this for years. So uh, so in the middle of uh, of uh, of this of all this, like after one or two years, I started to practice even uh, go to the uh, mosque. Go to the mullahs, the 
management uh, practice the uh, islamic way of uh, deliverance i read the quran a part of it and uh, in in my city where i live there are a lot of muslims so they have their own way of exorcism mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they they did exorcism on me and uh, they used to charge some money and uh, you know and uh, practice exorcism and i felt some relief and it has it also has some power mm -hmm. but no, no full deliverance sure it's not it's not a real deliverance it's in itself another counterfeit yeah another uh, another counterfeit they are using some spirits to uh, to to take away the spirits which are troubling you mm -hmm. but uh, but it's not uh, full deliverance they are replacing one spirit with the other spirit exactly what, yeah yeah what i came to know later mm -hmm. so so i also went to the, that that didn't help so i went to a lot of witch doctors black magicians and uh, you know uh, other meditations a way of meditation through reading the hindu scriptures the bhagavad gita i read it three times and meditated according to what's written in the bhagavad gita that way of meditation i thought will will help you to overcome the negative impacts of the meditation which i practice meditation so, meditation to counteract the previous meditation yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because dear. Mm -hmm. because uh, i was not aware i was I had nobody to help me it mm -hmm. was like mm -hmm. like it is all left to myself to do and uh, i used to discuss this with some of my elders my family members they used to you know tell me do this do practice this year this other yoga practice this read this uh, spiritual book mm -hmm. go to this uh, mag black magician go to this witch doctor and go to this temple they they used to with, uh, with all sincerity they used to tell what they thought was the best uh, way of uh, getting delivered of course but uh -huh. uh, yeah but it didn't totally heal me uh, but my situation kept growing worse and uh, you know i i for five years of suffer like this and uh, i had a lot of times i have suicidal thoughts and uh, um I, but uh, never attempted a suicide there was a uh, whenever i had suicidal thoughts a small inner voice inside me used to say you know keep trying there is a way a way out keep trying mm -hmm. keep believing you know mm -hmm. it, it was very hard to motivate myself with all these things happening mm -hmm. but there was a small voice telling me keep keep going you know yeah my mother was the exact same actually what you described really reminds me like my mother too yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like like it is uh, the voice of God, you know, the inner voice which speaks to our hearts. Mm -hmm. What I, what I understand now. So um, then uh, I started reading the the books on positive thinking, and um, uh, the books on self heal, self help books, and all those things. Whatever I I could do, I was doing all with all sincerity, and. Uh, uh, like um, i also felt why should not why shouldn't i try jesus before i die before if i commit suicide let me try jesus as well you know mm -hmm. i tried i tried almost all the gods you know i tried uh, hinduism buddhism i also practice some buddhism techniques as well i tried islam i tried the witch doctors i tried the black magicians i tried the best doctors the psychiatrists psychologists and um so, I mean, so was you know, Jesus? Was Jesus like the last, um, the last hope? Was Jesus like your last attempt at help? Yeah, I thought. Uh, no. Let me, <gasps> let me also try Jesus. That thought came across in my mind. Mm -hmm. But one day, in uh, in uh, I in desperation, being unable to bear the horrible torment of the evil spirits, mm -hmm. I pray. I prayed to God. I prayed a, sim a prayer, a simple prayer. Uh, uh, because I, I followed so many gods, so many gurus and babas, and uh, uh, I said, I don't know who is the true god, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So many gods, I was confused. I read the Bhagavad Gita, I read the, the even the, uh, at the time, at the stage, somebody gave, like, I bought a Bible also, I read a part of it. I read the Genesis and I read, read Ecclesiastic. Uh, ecclesiastics there was nobody to guide me what to read what to do you know mm -hmm. i just randomly opened the bible and i read 
and I couldn't get help from the Bible as well, what I felt, because there's nobody tell me what is the message of Jesus and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, what we should believe and all that. Mm -hmm. So at the, at the time, we, uh, I, in desperation, prayed this prayer. I said, God, whoever you are, the whoever is the creator, who the God who gave me life, who brought me into this world, uh, who is the creator of this heaven and earth, who, whom I'm going to see after I die, Whoever you are, I said, whoever you are, whether you are Krishna or Muhammad or Jesus or Buddha, please help me. Please come and save me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I said, I don't want to play religious games. Mm -hmm. I, I I am dying. I And I pray that I, I said, I, um, the one true God who, who is the real God, please come and help me and heal me, deliver me from this problem. I have a real problem. I am dying. And I need help. I, I I'm not interested in any religion and a ritual. Not to not mm. to lift up lift up certain religion, pull down another religion. I'm I, I'm I'm not into that. I'm dying. I'm dying. I need a, I need a solution for for my problem. I mm. don't care who it is, what it is, but mm. I want to get delivered. You wanted the truth. You you wanted to know. You wanted help, but you also wanted. Will the true God please stand up? Yes. Basically, you wanted yes. to see who the true yes. God is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I said, who the the true God, whoever you are, please help me. Come to my rescue. Reveal mm -hmm. yourself to me. Mm -hmm. Solve my problems. I yes. I don't I, I don't want to play religious games. I don't want to play church. I don't want to play temple. I don't want to don't want to go go into ritualistic thing. I, I want a real real answer to my to my real problem which is killing me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i had to look after my family i had i have uh, responsibilities and i need the real go god to show up and help me mm -hmm. so uh, after i prayed the prayer immediately the pain in my head went off for wow. one day the, the pain <laughs> and the torment the torment left wow. for for one day uh -huh. but and I, I felt there is somebody listening to what I'm saying, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's somebody out there and I should find him who it is. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, but after one day, the pain returned, the torment returned, and I came to the, the uh, I, I was the same as, as I was in the beginning. So, the, uh, like the torment, the pain was still going on. Sure, because so you didn't, you didn't have Jesus as a relationship yet you were still on your searching for him searching yeah. searching journey you didn't yet know him and, and his power Amrit could you please advise anyone listening um, on what you feel they can do at this moment in time if this testimony is touching them what do you advise the listeners do yeah, I I recommend to the listeners to read the New Testament Bible, read the book of Mark, which has a sh like 16 chapters, around 15, 16 pages, where you can read the life of Jesus, how he delivered people from evil darkness, and meditate upon the positive sayings of Jesus. You know, one verse uh, in John chapter 8, verse 12, where Jesus says, uh, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So please do this and go and pray a prayer that God, whoever you are, the real God, one true God, lead me and guide me. If you don't believe in Jesus, just pray a normal, simple uh, prayer that God, the real God, the creator, please help me. Come and help me and lead me and guide me into your path. Amen. And, and next time, Amrit, you will continue with your story and, and we look forward to hearing how you, you came to have that personal relationship with Jesus and how he set you free from all of these uh, Hindu and, and yoga demons and all of that and, and where you are today, which is, is you've just become a pastor in India. So we really look forward to seeing you again next time. And thank you so much, Amrit, and God bless you. Yeah, God bless you too. Uh, I'm looking forward to finish my testimony and tell what God has done. Thanks a lot. God Me bless Me too. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Allah. Thank you. Thank you. 
the preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record, and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger, and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone, and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.